All right, Math 7 Superstars, here we go. 9.4 volumes of prisms. So the nice thing about this is you are finding what I like to call the inside of the shape. So essentially, how much can you fill the shape up with water or sand or flour, something like that. So our objective, I can find the volume of rectangular and triangular prisms. So this could be cubes or boxes. Maybe you're getting a bunch of Amazon boxes right now, stocking up, or maybe a simple triangle, but maybe a triangular box. Let's see what that looks like. All right, our volume, again, the inside, the inside of the 3D figure. So you got a rectangular base there for the first shape and then a height. And then your second shape, you have a triangular base, and then your height. So that looks like if we can find the area of the base, and then if we multiply it by the height, hey, that's our volume there. So we've got two formulas. Each of them essentially has a base that we just talked about. And if you remember, the base for a rectangle is just length times width. So we're going to say that our normal box, if you will, is just length times width times height. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then our triangular box, if you will. The base, remember, is half of a rectangle. So that's half of length times width or half of base times height. And then you multiply by the height there. So we've got length times width so that we don't conf or confuse it with the other height. So if you have these formulas identified, maybe you could have it right next to you as you're doing the actual assignment. You should be good to go. All right, so if you're actually taking excellent notes, like hopefully you are in preparation for next year of being an awesome eighth grader, we would go ahead and copy down our example. Now, to make a rectangular shape like this and then turn it into 3D, what I usually try and do to tell students is to go ahead and sketch a rectangle that's kind of slanted back. And you're gonna do that on the top and the bottom. And then once you have those shapes, then you're just going to go ahead and simply connect it with the vertical segments. And you can do the dashes in the back if you like to, to make it even more 3D-like, whatever you think is best for you. Some of you may just want to observe and try your best. Again, a calculator, totally acceptable right now. So make sure you are either doing a mental math or busting out your calculator. So we know, again, based off of our formula, base times height, capital B representing the base shape, which is a rectangle. We got a rectangular prism. So we're going to go ahead and do length times width times height. Now, this may seem a little basic for you because, again, it's just basic multiplication. But we're going to anticipate some a little bit more advanced problems coming up using this information here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and just simply substitute and multiply. I would even suggest to go ahead and get started by using your parentheses instead of the X for multiplication, because in eighth grade, we focus on those parentheses. So multiplying it in, 6 times 8 is 48. 48 times 15, the volume. Do not forget the units, please. Be very aware of that. Eighth graders tend to forget that quite often. We don't want our seventh graders to do that. We want you to start off right. Units are important. We've got cubic yards, because again, we're talking about volume, which is the third power. So instead of a cubic, you could write yards, and then with your exponent of 3 if you wish. For this one, we have a triangular prism. So obviously, you could rotate your image to have the base or the triangle be on the top and bottom. And then you'd have your height. So representing that information in a different way. So I'm going to like actually turn my screen and it goes all crazy. I see the 4 as the height. And then the 2 and the 5.5 is part of my triangle. <clears throat> so that's the base there that we just talked about. So length times width times height. And to be honest, it really doesn't matter where you really place your letters for the length, width, and height. You're just identifying which one works for you. But remember, sometimes we might be a little bit more challenging and we might give you a slant height, which is this number right here. That would not be used. So make sure you're aware of where the numbers go. So we just multiply it. So maybe you want to do 5.5 times 2 
times 4, and then divide by 2, because again, we've got the half here, so half of it gives you 22 cubic inches. All right, some of these are directly out of your textbook, and that is perfectly fine. Remember, on my webpage, you have access to the textbook. Simple link, click on that, and you will be good to go. Ooh, this is an actual cube. Since all the numbers are exactly the same, the length times width times height, it's really just 4 times 4 times 4, or 4 to the third power. And who knows, maybe you'll even memorize that before 8th grade, and you'll be a step ahead of your classmates. Or just good old traditional multiplication. Again, suggesting that you use your work with parentheses. Sorry that the X's are showing up. <clears throat> so we really have 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. And notice, this time we use the exponent of 3, which represents the cube. So you can read it as feet cubed, or we would also understand it as cubic feet. All right, let me give you a moment to think about this one. And remember, with the awesome ability of digital learning, you can pause the video and try it on your own. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to recommend that you pause the video and give this a try. And welcome back. <clears throat> Hopefully you actually did that. If not, I'd probably look a little awkward just saying that, but that's okay. So we've got our three numbers visible. Again, you can identify them as a length and width and height. And then you just substitute it in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 12 times 5 times 9. Now, maybe this is why the X is still used. So instead of doing an X, if you'd like to, you could use a dot. That is better than an X. An X in 8th grade is only a variable. Maybe you want to use a little dot. But I would suggest maybe just each one having its own separate parentheses. So 12, 5, 9. Then we take half of it, and we get 270 meters cubed. So really, all you're doing is multiplying on your calculator. 12 times 5 <clears throat> times 9, divide by 2. All right, just a few more. Ooh, look at this one. It already gives us the base. So that means even less work that you have to do. So if you remember, all you're going to do is take the base and multiply it by the height. So if you were to rotate your picture or rotate your device even, you might be able to see that the height is simply the 20. Again, instead of X, use parentheses, type it into your calculator, boom. Calculators are nice. We still gotta keep up on those basic skills though. When we come back, wanna make sure that you are ready to go. Again, cubic feet, feet cubed, several different ways to describe it. All right, this is what we were working towards our word problems. All right, two rectangular prisms each have a volume of 120 centimeters cubed. So that means they have equal volume. The base of prism A is two by four. The base of prism B is four by six. Find the height of each prism. So it's really just like two separate problems, if you will. They both have the same volume so let's go ahead and break it up into two problems, problem A and problem B. <clears throat> so for problem A, we have 120 for the volume is equal to 2 times 4 times height. So again, one more time, use your parentheses, please. We know 2 times 4 is, then we divide, and that'll give us the height of our prism. <clears throat> So our prism is going to be 15, don't forget your units, as centimeters. One second. <coughs> and then our second problem, volume B, the exact same height again, but this time it's represented as a 4 by 6 times the height. Use your parentheses there. We know 4 times 6 is 24. We're going to divide on both sides. So what is our height? If you divide both sides by 24, your height is going to be 5, or 5 centimeters. So not only are we working on our volume formulas there for our prisms, rectangular prisms, but we're also remembering how to solve equations. Volume A divided by 8, both sides, and volume B divided by 24, both sides. 
Ooh, this one's going to be an interesting one. Hey, we got a cube though. If you remember, a cube, all the sides are exactly the same. So let's see. The surface area of a cube is 150 square centimeters. So if I were to unwrap the cube, sorry, we would have six identical sides. So remember the top and bottom, and then that inner rectangle is broken up into four equal parts. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got the six parts, or six faces, if you will. So if I take my 150, which is the total surface area, divided by six, that means each face has a surface area of 25 centimeters squared. Now, if it's a cube, remember each side is congruent. All the sides are exactly the same. So therefore, the sides have to be five, because five times five is 25. Or going the other way, the square root of 25 is five. So if each side of a cube is five centimeters, then I can find the volume as doing length times width times height, which is just five times five times five. Again, use parentheses, please. Do not use the X's there. Five times five is 25 times another five is 125 cubic centimeters. So the reason we can do that so quickly, though, is because it's a cube. A cube has all the same sides. If it was a different shape, maybe just a generic rectangular prism, then we'd have to be a little bit more specific or actually need a little bit more information. All right, so what you have is some simple notes to help you be successful. I think this is definitely gonna be one of your easier assignments because again, using some basic formulas and you have your calculator with you. All right, be awesome, superstars.